Hello, it's Trevor here again and thanks for tuning in. This video is all about how extenuating circumstances can help you. Extenuating circumstances are all those things that happen in life that we can't control and sometimes have a negative impact on when we're studying. So for example, you might trip and break your arm. That would mean that it's extremely painful or difficult or impossible to do any typing or handwriting. That's a classic example of how that would impact negatively your ability to do your studies. Another example might be you're in paid employment. Perhaps you're a part-time student and your boss has suddenly dumped a whole load of new responsibilities on you, which eats into your ability to do your studies because you're spending too much time dealing with these new responsibilities at work and you're leaving less and less time each week to do your university work. It might be that you have children at home that you need to look after. Perhaps one of those children uh, has become sick and you need to spend extra time looking after your son or daughter. Again, all those things will have a negative impact on the time and your uh, ability to spend really valuable and useful time studying because you're thinking about your sick son or your sick daughter or your mind's taken away by thinking about those challenges that your boss has presented to you. With extenuating circumstances, the key is that these things happen, they're out of your control, but you'll also need to be able to provide to the university some proof of them occurring. So check with your university before these sort of things crop up and check with them that they have an extenuating circumstances process. They might call it mitigating circumstances procedures. They might call it something else. But normally the process is that it's an online system that you need to use. And the first thing you would usually do is talk to the academic who's in charge of the part of the course that is being negatively impacted for you. So you might go to a module leader, a lecturer, a professor who is in the class um, and you can, because of your extenuating circumstances that you can see, perhaps you have a hospital appointment in a month's time and you're going to be away for four weeks, then go to those academics and explain the situation and discuss with them the best way for you to manage that negative impact. So it might be as simple as agreeing a late submission date or an extension to a deadline for your work with that academic. It might be that you have to pause your whole course and come back to it a few months later or perhaps during the next cycle of the presentation of that course. Whatever it is, that discussion with the academic is really, really important because that academic will be asked to approve the request for extenuating circumstances that you make. They might also be able to give you different ideas about how you can manage that challenge. So for example, instead of working in a team, you might be able to do your work individually because you're facing that extra challenge that the other team members aren't. So it's really a valuable thing to talk to the academic at that stage to explore options, but also to get their approval. Uh, for your application. That's because once you have completed all the online paperwork that you would need to do uh, to submit your extenuating circumstances application, the academic's approval is sought because then an independent extenuating circumstances committee or panel is convened and they assess your application. This is because they need to vet all the extenuating circumstances for all the university students that are made throughout the academic year, just to make sure they are legitimate. And some students sadly try and play the system a little bit and try and get extra time for their assignments for dubious reasons. So usually every university has this external uh, sorry, uh, extenuating circumstances committee to check what proof students have provided for their reasons 
for their extenuating circumstances um, application. So then if the extenuating circumstances committee or panel uh, agrees with your application, they will inform you and uh, you will proceed uh, with that approval. But my advice is if you can, apply for extenuating circumstances before the issue that you're applying for gets too big and too much out of control. This is because some reasons for extenuating circumstances uh, you can see before they happen. So for example, if you're pregnant and you think, well, once my baby has been born, I'll need about six months to look after my infant and that will take me away from my studies. Well, applying for and if they are approved, getting extenuating circumstances agreement from the university helps and kind of acts as a insurance against your poor performance at that stage. So you might find actually uh, after you've given birth a couple of months, you feel better, you feel okay, and you can go back to your studies. Well, if you do that, and your performance is degraded as a result, then you've got the extenuating circumstances to fall back on. Okay, hopefully that helps you understand what extenuating circumstances are and how to proceed with them if you need to. So thanks very much. If you like the channel, please give me a thumbs up, put comments below, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. I've got lots more videos to help you at university. Bye now.